All right, and welcome to a segment called Profile. Today we're going to be looking at the Dave Jones Design O-Tool Oscilloscope and Audio Tools Eurorack module. Let's go ahead and power it on. So the O-Tool Oscilloscope and Audio Tools module is fairly straightforward in its layout. You have an LCD here at the top. Immediately below that, you have four buttons that are going to allow you to move through the various modes as well as change parameters within those modes. Right below that, you have a series of three jacks going down, and they're tied in rows. So like this jack is tied to this jack, this jack to this jack, this jack to this jack. And uh, the way they work is you can feed an audio signal or a sub-audio signal into, let's say, for example, input one, and then you can take that same signal and then feed it out to a VCA or a mixer or a filter or anything like that. Input number two works very similar or actually identically to input number one. That is, you feed a signal into here and then you can also pipe it out from here. So basically these work as multiples. So this is a multiple of this and this is a multiple of this. Now immediately below that you have a trigger in section. This section down here is going to be used to trigger in the oscilloscope modes. So let's jump right in to one of the first modes that you'll see when you first turn on your O-Tool, and that is the single scope oscilloscope. We're gonna take a triangle out from our audio frequency generator down here. We're gonna pipe it into input one. There we are. And there's our triangle wave. So if I change my frequency, you can see it update in real time. You can change the magnification here our time base, basically zooming out. There you go, all the way out to about five seconds. And then immediately to the right of that, you have a couple of different trigger modes for the oscilloscope. So right now those aren't exactly active because I don't have uh, an external trigger coming in. So let me just go back to my mode number one. There we go. And immediately to the right of that, you have our voltage scale. So right now I'm in plus or minus 10 volts DC. But if I wanted to change that, I could. So right now I'm in plus or minus five volts DC or plus or minus 10 volts AC, zero to 10 volts, zero to five volts, and then back to square one. Cool, so that's our first mode. Now some of these parameters are gonna carry over as we move into the different modes here. So you'll see that here in a moment. Let's go right into mode two. This is going to be our dual trace layered mode. So right here you can actually visualize two waveforms at the same time. Right now we're looking at our triangle wave going into input one, but I'm gonna take a sine wave out from my IntelliGel Dixie over here off camera and I'm gonna feed that into input two down here. So we should see a little bit of movement, there we go. So now the green waveform is our IntelliGel Dixie and the red waveform is our audio frequency generator. I can change the frequency of my IntelliGel Dixie and you can see the waveform update in real time. Very useful tool for visualizing your waveforms. So that is our dual layered mode. Let's go into our dual stacked mode. I think this is gonna be my favorite one here. Now here you can view two different waveforms, one on the top, one on the bottom. So the one on the top is our audio frequency generator triangle wave. I can change the frequency of that if I want to. And then the bottom one is of course our IntelliGel Dixie. I can change the frequency of that waveform as well. Now this works for both audio rate and sub audio rate. Right now I happen to be using, for the most part, audio rate. And then the next one is going to be our levels. So this is going to allow us to see the uh, display of our levels. And you can change this switch to go a little slower or you can go faster. Slow, fast. Okay, so that's our levels. Moving right along to mode number five. These are our VU meters or our peak meters. You have various changes you can do, plus or minus 2.5 volts, plus five, and plus four decibels. 
Okay, let's go right into the next mode. Mode number six, our spectrum analyzer. Here you can visualize the frequency content of your signals coming in. So here you basically can set the top frequency. So there it's going to be 20K. If I hit that, then my top is 10K. If I hit that, my bottom or my top is 5K. I move 2.5K. Now you also have an option to change from linear or logarithmic. And you can also magnify right there. So if you need to see it a little bit better, you can. Personally, I find logarithmic a little bit more useful. And then you can kind of move through the modes until you see exactly what you want. So fairly straightforward and easy to use, which I like very much. Now let's go into our next mode here. This is going to be our XY display probably one of the most uh, intriguing of these. So you can change slower, faster, obviously right here from our buttons. And this is giving you just another visualization tool to see your waveforms. And I got some pretty interesting results clicking over here, my voltage scale. It's almost like my own TV show. Fairly interesting stuff. So that is my XY mode. Now let's go into mode number eight. This is our frequency meter and tuner. This is going to allow me to view the frequency coming in. So right now, since I have two inputs, let's just take one input. At input one, this is from my audio frequency generator, and it's telling me the exact frequency in hertz of the signal coming in and the approximate um, scale value. So that says that's a D8, plus or minus, right there. Or actually plus, I'm sorry. Okay. So you can also use this as a tuner. Haven't quite delved into that uh, area yet, but I will get there. And now let's go into our last mode, the voltmeter. So here you can read volts coming in. Uh, this would be fairly useful if you were going to uh, need to read that out when you're doing electronics projects or anything like that. So let me actually take a low frequency signal from my IntelliGel Dixie over here. I'll take a same sine wave, but this time I'm going to go into input one so I can see what that readout is. So there's my low frequency sine wave, and you can see it going into the positive and the negative area of that. So fairly useful, useful, uh, tool here in front of us. Um, I have gotten tons of use out of this module and I think it's one of the great ones so far. So that in a nutshell is our first segment profile. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it very useful and uh, go out on the web, find out more information about this entirely useful module. Thanks for watching.